Moving on, we have Maran no Oi O to Venatus. Interesting title, just by the way it sounds. Um, I guess this is the show Satellite's doing instead of Log Horizon S2. The digital or Vanatus of the fantasy story are beautiful girls who ride into battle brandishing weapons received from dragons. There are seven such Vanatus who rule seven territories and instill fear in neighboring countries. A boy named Tinguru, nice name, is a minor noble in the kingdom of Boryunu who encounters a Vanatus in battle. She is the silver-haired, red-eyed, silver Fraulein Eren. She defeats him, but instead of killing him, she takes him prisoner. I kind of had some Shanna flashbacks for a minute there when it described her as silver-haired, red-eyed, at silver Fraulein, because the way to describe Shanna is the red, is the, what do they describe it? It's red-haired, crimson-eyed, or is it crimson-haired, red-eyed? Uh, flame haze, I don't know. <laughs> but it was like some serious fucking flashback right there, which almost makes me want to watch it just because of that. But I've heard not so great things about this. It's apparently your typical harem. The main, there's one main dude and like the seven, uh... Uh, Venatus are all chicks. The titular Venatus of the fantasy story are beautiful girls, and it says there's seven Venatus, and the guy meets all of them. It says he gets taken prisoner by one of them or whatever, or maybe she's not a Venatus, I don't know. Or yeah, she is. I'm already forgetting the synopsis. So, it's basically like a harem kind of thing. They all want his dick by the end, so that kind of sucks. But I'm going to be extremely stupid, and for the very shallow reason that the, that, that one sentence reminded me of Shanna, I'm going to watch it, because <laughs> people have said some very stupid things about why Shanna's bad, and it's fucking amazing, so this could just be another example, and like Shanna, it is being adapted from a light novel, so maybe it's one of those things where people complain, oh no, it's a harem, but in context, it's actually perfectly fine, it's one of those things where... You know when people complain about something and they're like, oh, this is stupid and it looks like this and no, 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 no. And if you haven't seen the show, you're like, yes, this makes sense. But then if you actually watch the show, you're like, wait a minute, in context, that's actually not the case. That happens a lot. It could be one of those things. So I don't always trust every piece of criticism and compliments that I hear on the internet because context is important. <laughs> I'm just trying to justify it any possible way for wanting to pick this up for like the shallowest of reasons. I'm going to pick it up. But I'm telling you right now, it's pr I don't, it's probably a bad idea. I want it to not be a bad idea, but it's probably a bad idea. Um, just my advice. Uh, moving on, we have Ushinawarata Mirai no Motomete. Uh, I don't know. The story is set one autumn in the Uchihama era? I don't even know what era that is. With the construction of a new school building, there will be one last general club festival at the old building that is slated to be closed. The students vow to go all out to make this final cultural festival a success. The astronomy club of the uh, astronomy club of the protagonist So Akiyama is filled with big names on campus. Just before the festival, the club receives a request to calm the uneasiness among the students. There are reports of ghost sightings, accidents, and other mysterious incidents at the old building when Yui Furukawa, a quiet girl who transferred late into the school, appears before So. The gears of fate slowly begin to move. So this is basically one of those super ultra vague light novel title or uh, visual novel synopses so that fucking anything can happen. Usually just fucking chicks. <laughs> like that's really all visual novels usually end up being. Just, just picking up chicks and banging them. That's it. It's being based off a visual novel. I almost want to watch it. I almost like watching visual novel adaptations because you get everything from like the most, you know comforting, no sex, uh, for some reason the first one that comes to mind is Fortune Arterial. It was like only the main girl's route, which is interesting, it was one of the one of the first visual novel, uh, novel adaptations in a while that was not Omnibus. Uh, it was only the main girl's route, and it was very safe, like there was no, maybe they implied that there was sex at one point, I don't even remember, it was a mediocre show. Um, but I like watching them just to see where they can go, because you go everywhere from there, to Yusuke no Sora with, like, actual sex scenes that are admittedly censored, but, you know, I don't know. I'm, I, I feel like I should almost start a game where, like, I all, I automatically pick up visual novel adaptations just to see how long I can last. Like, they could be, because the thing with visual novels is that they can be so fucking stupid that they're entertaining, but they can also be so tryhard that they're boring. Uh, you get all, you get all kinds of the spectrum when it comes to visual novels, uh, especially in anime adaptations of them. So I'm going to pick it up just to see what it turns out like. And lo and behold, yet another show. It could be good. It could be bad. Actually, no, I don't expect this to be very good. 
it's 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 probably not gonna be good i highly doubt it i just i'm just curious to see what kind of bad it is if it's entertaining bad or boring bad because one leads to pretty entertaining watching and the other leads to why am i wasting my life watching this so i'm gonna watch it see if it's entertaining or not at least um and that's that and i need to hurry the fuck up because a lot of shows to go through and it's already been like almost an hour so actually no it's been like 40 minutes but still i need to hurry the hell up get through so many shows we've only gone like three rows so many left next we have fate stay night Unl unlimited blade works <laughs> right as i say we need to hurry, we need to hurry up i get to a show i need to say a lot of things about Alternate retelling of the Fate Stay Night TV series, remake of the Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works movie. In this series, Tosaka Rin will be the will be the major female character. Revelations about Shiro and his destiny will be made. So basically, what's interesting is that this is a TV format, but it's an ad, it's a retelling of the movie version of Unlimited Blade Works, which makes more sense if you just consider the fact the visual novel is the source material and they were both you know just different routes. Um. Basically, here's the skinny of everything. Fate Stay Night was not a very good story. It wasn't a very good anime, and it's also not a very good visual novel. I know a lot of people will disagree. They'll be like, the anime adaptation was bad. Um, the visual novel was also quite not very good. I have tried to read the Fate Stay Night visual novel because of the praise it gets multiple times, and I have not lasted very long every single time. It is very fucking boring to get through. Um, lots of airy talk about very unimportant things, about how the skies and the clouds look like fucking birds and shit. Trying, I'm not necessarily trying to sound deep, but just trying to be atmospheric and just being fucking boring. What I'm trying to get at is that Phase of is not very good. At least the main route. Uh, Unlimited Blade Works is better, but still has some pretty big issues. And then a lot of people like Heaven's Feel, but that's never gone at adaptation in any format at all. Uh, so the big thing here is that people still don't know how to pronounce this fucking uh, production company. It's either Ufotable or Ufotable. I think Ufotable makes more sense because it rolls off the tongue better. So I'm just going to go with that. So Ufotable is making this, and as you know, they did the Fate Zero anime. It was good but also had issues story-wise. Um, but it was all made up for because Rider and Waver were fucking fantastic. The thing with Ufotable is that they are a very good animation studio because they get movie-sized budgets. I think people forget that a lot. People are like, oh my god, Ufotable are the best animators around. But they forget that the Fate Zero budget was like a fucking movie budget. Like, they got a shitload of money to make that thing. So it kind of... It's like... Any production studio could do a very good animation job if you give them a huge chunk of money, you know? Like, I'm, I'm not saying that Ufootable's untalented, but I'm just saying, you know, you give a production studio a lot of money, and what the hell do you expect? It's gonna look good. But that's the thing. I don't think Ufootable are necessarily good... I mean, well, it's not that they're not good animators, it's just that I don't think the, that Fate Zero was that well animated. I think it had very nice particle effects, like when they used their noble phantasms and shit, there were nice little particle effects and, you know, the little uh, effects that they did that they were done, I'm pretty sure they were done through CG and they were done really well. Um, they blended in quite nicely uh, to the animation and uh, it, it, it was colorful. Like, that's the thing. I said before, I like really bold colors when it comes to animation and that's pretty much what Ufotable does. <laughs> they do very solid colors uh, all the fucking time. Tends to be very deep colors, like deep red and deep blue, you know? Uh, very standout-ish, in a way. And I'm, again, I'm just pretending like I know what the fuck I'm talking about. It's, the animation in and of itself, though, is not necessarily all that great. I mean, it, it's consistently good. I mean, they took split core so that they could keep up the budget, but, I, I don't know, it's, maybe I'm just being a negative Nancy. I think what I'm just basically trying to get around to is that this TV adaptation is also going to look quite good, especially if you liked how Fate Zero looked. It's getting, like, the same, if not an even larger budget. Uh, so it's going to look good if that's your definition of looking good. Um, which I kind of agree. I mean, I, I'm, I don't have, you know massive requirements when it comes to animation, but I'm very open about different styles, hence why I fucking love Akunohana style and everyone fucking hates it. 
but Fate Stay Night isn't very good. That's the problem. I feel like maybe with an actual TV series, and this is probably going to be like 24 episodes. Maybe it'll only be 12. I don't know. But Unloaded Bleedworks got a movie. And admittedly, it was it worked as a movie because it skipped the stuff from the TV series that it already told because there was a TV series, so it got to skip that information, so it still did decently well. Um, but I feel like with the 24 episodes on the Unlimited Blade Works, they could make it work. I mean, admittedly, it's the same amount of length that the original Fate Stay Night got, and it was still pretty fucking bad. But, I don't know. I, the only reason Unlimited Blade Works is better than the main route is because Shiro is a shitty protagonist, and not only a shitty protagonist, but a shitty character. Um, and the main route, uh, Saber's route, is that he and Saber are the main characters, basically. Uh, which sucks. Because even Saber's not that great a character. Like, you know, she's a strong, independent woman, but she doesn't really do much beyond fight things. You know? I like that she's a well-clad... I, I like that Saber isn't really fan y which is ironic because a lot of people love Saber, and you can find all kinds of porn of her if you, you know, really cared to find it. Which is... It's almost funny, like, how that works in reverse. Like, the more scantily clad characters don't get as much fan service as the characters that are well-dressed. It's it's weird. I don't know. I, I would I like, I'd like, like to understand how that works. Um, what am I even doing? I haven't spent, like, almost fucking eight minutes on the show talking about the most random shit. Um, basically, let's crunch this down. Unlimited Blade Works will be better than Face Day Night because it doesn't focus on Shiro. I mean, Shiro is still technically a main character in this. But Archer is more the main character than anyone in this. Okay, here's this. I'm gonna I'm gonna bridge my thoughts on this very simply. If your first experience with Fate Stay Night was the Fate Zero anime adaptation, don't have very high expectations going into this, other than it looking as good, if not better, than Fate Zero. If you liked how that looked, it will still it will look just it will look the same. So it's gonna look as good, if not better, than that. Story and character-wise, don't get your hopes up. Well, actually, Fate Zero didn't have that amazing character, that many of amazing characters either, either other than Rider and Waver. But still, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> it it's not going to be atrocious because Unlimited Blade Works is better than the the Saber route. But at the same time, brace yourselves because Shiro is a very bad protagonist. He is not very well written, and he doesn't really improve at all throughout the entire thing. <laughs> He sort of does in the limited blade works, which also helps it be a good route. And I'm sorry, my voice just went there. That's how I make my cautious voice, I guess. Um, I'm spending way too much time on this. I I think I've said everything I need to say. I, it was a complete fucking mess because I'm not working off a script or anything. Um, maybe I'll make an individual video on this when it starts airing. Um, I'm sorry it was a complete fucking mess, but if you could keep up with my random ramblings and sort of make a coherence out of them... Basically, that's my thoughts on this. Next, we have Cross Angie, Tenji no, Tenji to Ryu no Rondo. Humanity and another Sunrise show. Humanity has obtained a technology called mana, similar to magic. By using its power, it is able to subjugate all war, starvation, pollution, etc. Angel Eyes, princess of the Misurugi Empire, was supposed to wear the crown. However, she realizes that she is a Norma in a regular existence that cannot use mana. Normas are treated as heretics and as things rather than people. Having everything stolen from her, she isolates herself on an island. There, she meets a young group. It meets, meets why did I add young? She meets a group of Norma girls. No, wait, what? There, she meets a group of Norma girls who know nothing but battle. The girls spend their days riding humanoid robot weapons called Baramiro, Bar Baramiru, hunting giant dragons that have come from another dimension to invade Earth. Wow, this fucking synopsis is all over the place. Or I should say the setting is all over the place. First, they're like, oh, we have mana instead of it's similar or it's a new technology called mana. And then they say it's similar to magic, which I mean, maybe means they already know about magic and use it. Or maybe they're just like, it's like magic. I don't know. And then it's like, oh, and then we have these people that can't use magic. And then they go on this island and then they pile giant robots and fight fucking dragons. And it's like, what? I feel like this is Sunrise basically just going crazy. They're like, we're doing four shows this season because fuck it. Let's see how much money we can make. Let's just go crazy with this last one. I don't even know if this is the last one. I wouldn't be surprised if there was another Sunrise show. This is the last one I remember off the top of my head that they're doing this season. There could be more. Um, basically, um, the main character's outfit is like 
sexualized as fuck. <laughs> Not even gonna bother. I don't know why she's wearing, like, fucking light green neon knee socks. I don't fucking know. Her design is fucking wacky. But I like that thing in the background. I can't tell if it's, like, a robot that they pilot, or, like, one of the dragons, or a ship? I don't know. But it looks cool. I like it. I like the art style. Um, <laughs> watch the actual show not have this art style at all. Um... I'm gonna pick it up just because it seems like Sunrise have lost their fucking minds, which admittedly they have done before. <laughs> it was called Valve Rave. <laughs> I hope that this is similar. I actually should have looked up the staff for this and see if any of Valve Rave staff were on board for this. Because, my god, that would be fucking amazing. But yeah, it, it doesn't have a similar synopsis as Valve Rave, but the wackiness is there. Um, admittedly, Valve Rave didn't have the wackiest synopsis. It was just kind of like, out there? And then it just went crazy. Um, well, except for space vampires. There was that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I almost want to watch this because it'll almost be like, not a deconstruction of anything story-wise, but like a deconstruction of Sunrise's fucking mental stability. Um, hopefully that's exactly what it is and they're not actually trying to take this seriously. Hope it, I, I actually genuinely hope that this is like their staff just being locked in a room and going batshit crazy over time. Because that would need lead to some fucking amazing writing. It would be great. I really hope that's what this is about. So I'm going to give it a go. If it turns out that they actually kind of feel like they know what they're doing. And taking it seriously. I'll probably drop it. Because it'll probably bore the shit out of me. Um. You heard it here first folks. Ryoka hopes anime... Ryuga, Ryuga has higher hopes for when animators and staff are losing their fucking minds rather than actually trying to do something serious. Yeah, heard it here first. Moving on, we have World Trigger. A gate to another dimension has burst open and from it emerges gigantic invisible creatures that threaten all of humanity. Earth's only defense is a mysterious group of warriors who have co-opted the alien technology in order to fight back. This is basically your standard shonen. Well, it, I think it's your shonen. It, it kind of looks like it artistically. Um, it's being done by Toei Animation, which is pretty much the studio. They, they do other things too, but they typically are the adapter adapters of uh, Shonen Works. Um, I think, unless I'm my memory's just going to shit, which wouldn't surprise me. Um, this is the manga that's like on its way to be one of the replacements for the big three because they're kind of ending. I think that's what people have said. I don't fucking know. Um, basically, I don't know what it means, basically. <laughs> it, it's, it's, a, it's a shonen manga adaptation, and I kind of want to watch it. Because let me, let me say something right now. Um, it's not the case for all of them. Bleach is definitely an, an exception to this. But generally, shonen manga are actually pretty decently well written. The thing that holds them down the most is, like, insufferable main characters and a constant need to push the friendship is power angle. Without those, they would be pretty good. Like, I, you, you will hear this here first, and I will stand by this. <laughs> I do this a lot. Uh, make controversial statements. Masashi Kishimoto is a good writer. The only thing holding Naruto down is the fact that he has to stick with the whole friendship is power angle. And the fact that Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke are the fucking worst characters ever. Okay, they're not the worst characters ever, but they're pretty bad. They bring the show down a lot. He doesn't need to replace them so much as write them to be better. And he would be great. Which is why I'm actually really excited to see what Masashi Kishimoto does after Naruto. Because he's actually a good writer. He just, it just feels like he has certain checkboxes he has to check off. You know, and that's what's holding him back. I feel like if he goes full scale, like, just does whatever he wants with his next work because of, you know, he's, like, swimming in money now, that he could produce something pretty fucking great. I genuinely believe that. Um, and now I'm talking about Naruto when I'm supposed to be talking about World Trigger. <laughs> My point that I was trying to make is that Shonen are actually decently well written except for a couple aspects. Generally, their worlds are pretty well done. Um, the powers are creative and well thought out. Um, usually, again, there's exceptions. It's just sudden, I have a power now because reasons. They understand how actual fucking tension works. I'm looking at you, fucking Mahoka. <laughs> I 
Like, as, admittedly, as, like, not great personality-wise and such as their main characters tend to be, at least they understand how to actually cause tension with fights. You know, characters have to constantly surpass greater and greater heights. Other than Mahoka, where the main character just fucking waltzes through everything and there's absolutely no tension to speak of because he can one-shot everything and is immune to everything. Dude gets fucking sniped and he shrugs it off. Like, what the actual fuck? <laughs> this turned from praising Masashi Kishimoto to shitting on Mahoka, and it's supposed to be about World Trigger. All this is basically a roundabout to saying, I will watch World Trigger. Exception, exception, I'm going to wait. Or maybe I don't need to wait. Maybe I can look it up right after I'm done recording this. If World Trigger is going to be more than 26 episodes, I'm not going to watch it. I've said this before, but long-running shows are intimidating to me because that's a huge commitment. If I constantly have to keep up with a show for the long... I have barely managed to keep up with shows that rat last... That rast? I'm getting... Wow, that was nice. I, I'm barely keeping up with shows that last 12 episodes. Imagine if I had to keep up with a show that lasted, like, fucking 100. It'd be atrocious. I'd fall so far behind. Jesus, it'd be awful. So as long as it's not, like, a massive amount of episodes, I'll watch it. And I guess, let me put it this way. Even if it is a massive amount of episodes, if I hear very good things about it, I'll probably pick it up. And then it'll be one of those things where if I fall behind on it, I'll put it on the back burner, and then I'll, get, I'll come back to it later, so I can do bits of marathoning, or maybe just watch one episode every couple days, you know, go at my own pace kind of thing. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm sure no one fucking cares, but that's what I'm going to do. Moving on, we have Nanatsu no Taizai. T Taizai? Sure. When they were accused of trying to overthrow the monarchy, the feared warriors, the feared warriors, the seven deadly sins, were sent into exile. Princess Elizabeth discover discovers the truth. The sins were framed by the king's guard, the Holy Knights. Too late to prevent them from assassinating her father and seizing the throne. Now the, princess is, now the princess is on the run, seeking the sins to help her reclaim the kingdom. But the first sin she meets is a little innkeeper with a talking pig. He doesn't even have a real sword. Have the legends of the sin's strength been exaggerated? Um, so this is yet another shonen manga, but what's interesting is that instead of being done by Toei Animation, this is being done by A1 Pictures. And just based on the promo image, I'm getting flashbacks to Moggy? Because that was another shonen manga that they adapted, which uh, was quite good. And I've heard... That setting-wise, this is similar to Moggy in not necessarily, like, like a literal sense, but the imagination aspect. Like, there's flying houses or something, or, like, maybe it's flying pigs, I don't know. There's, like, weird magic shit in this world, and it's a really neat world. Uh, I also like the art style, where it's kind of like a blend of modern animation uh, techniques, but the character designs are more, like, 80s, 90s-esque, you know? Uh, it's, it's kind of cool. I like it. Um... What's also really interesting is that the music composer for this is Hiroyuki Sawano, who you probably know as that guy who did the music for Attack on Titan, and more recently, Aldenoa Zero. Which is interesting, because I don't know what works he's done before this, I could have just checked, I was on the fucking tab and then I left. Um, he's done works before that, but those were like his most standout, like, rise to fame works. Well, more Attack on Titan than El No Zero, but El No Zero was, like, continuing the saga. This is more shonen-y than either of those, because it's shonen. I mean, you could argue that Attack on Titan is technically shonen. Um, it just, you know, has more death. <laughs> but otherwise, it's basically a shonen. Um, but I'm really interested to see what he does with the music for this. I'm very interested. I'm wondering if he'll go with, like, a completely different style, like, out of left field, or, like, if he'll go with his usual stuff, but maybe put a different spin on it. I'm very interested to see this from, like, uh, a writing angle as far as world and characters, but also as far as music goes. And I have to say, like, uh, as far as, like, not sequels go, this is probably the show I'm looking forward to the most. Again, exemption sequel-wise. Uh, this is the most first new show uh, that I'm looking forward to the most, and I have good, ho I have high hopes for it, I really hope that it turns out to be good, Moggy was very good, which A1 also did, 
And if it's the same staff that adapted Moggy, it could be very good. I mean, Moggy was very good to begin with. Um, but I've heard that Nanatsu is also, it's, I don't know why I'm saying that. The actual title is just Seven Deadly Sins. Um, I've heard Seven Deadly Sins is also quite good. So I'm hoping it turns out to be another very good, uh, work, uh, adaptation, whatever you want to say from A1. And I know a lot of people shit on A1 for their adaptation of Moggy because they're manga readers. I read the manga adaptation of Moggy as it aired. I liked the anime ad adaptation better. Fight me. Fucking fight me. I'm not kidding though, I really did like the anime adaptation better than the manga. There was a uh, very good directing in it, the directing in it was very standout, and uh, the tweaks that they did to the story, like the things that they had to leave out, uh, were things that were okay to leave out, or that they just basically readjusted them uh, to work better in a different way or something. Um, it was a very, very, very good uh, adaptation. I'm spending way too much time on these shows. I, I, I think on the last four shows alone, I have spent like at least 30 minutes. That's insane. Time to go for the speed round. Next, we have Grisai no Kaijitsu, anime adaptation of Front Wing's adult PC game La Fruit de la Grisai. Or Grisaya, I don't fucking know. The story is set in an academy that is a cloistered orchard for girls to be educated and cultivated away from external influences. Five girls spend their lives within these walls in repentance and atonement. Yuji Kazami has just enrolled as the sole male student there. Um, this actually really reminds me of, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, this reminds me of an, uh, a, 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 a doujin, a doujin, a doujin doujin. Um, what was it called? I think it was called the Beautiful Girls Club? Very fascinating, fascinating doujin. If you're if you're into pornography with plot, <laughs> you should read it. It's uh, actually quite fascinating. I'm trying to double check it right now that it is actually called uh, Beautiful Girls Club, but I can't remember the fucking author's name, so I'm having trouble finding it. Uh, give me a minute. Give me a minute. I can find it. I'm just gonna buy time. Shit, I need to buy time by thinking of something. Um. Um, uh, it's a visual novel adaptation, and like I said before, I like watching these just for the sheer what-the-fuck factor of if it turns out to be good or not. Uh, it could be quite good, it could be quite bad, I hope my mouse clicks aren't picking up on the microphone, they probably are, fuck. Um, I have no idea how it'll turn out. Um, I hope it's entertaining bad, but I've, I think I've actually seen art for this, and the art in the visual novel is quite good, although it's not gonna be the same level of art for the anime adaptation, but still, it looks quite good. And yeah, it was called the, uh, the Dujin series. There's actually 10 chapters. Uh, well, there's nine chapters and there's like an epilogue or something. It's called Beautiful Girls Club. And the synopsis reminded me of that. Now you know I read Dojins, like fucking everyone in the universe that watches anime. It's really not a surprise. <laughs> um, I don't know why I had to draw that comparison. I, it just did. It reminded me of it so fucking much. The, the, the use of the word orchard. The girls being cultivated away from external influences. The sole male student. <laughs> Admittedly, the reasoning is probably different. Actually, maybe it's similar. I don't fucking know how the visual novel goes. Maybe there's some plot twists or some shit. Um, I'm sure the reason for this is very different than Beautiful Girls Club. A lot less pornographic reasons. A lot less apocalyptic spoilers. Actually, you know it's apocalyptic. unlike the fucking first chapter. Um, but, uh, yeah. I'm curious to see how it turns out. Wait, this is the speed run. Hurry up. Uh, next, we have Ukami Shoujo no to Kuro Oji, which looks like your typical fucking shoujo. The story centers around Erika Sh Shinohara, a vain 16-year-old girl who tells her friends about her romantic exploits, but she actually has no boyfriend. She claims that a handsome boy and a candid photo is her boyfriend, but it turns out that boy is a schoolmate named Kyoya Sada. She has no choice but to make him her fake boyfriend. Unfortunately, Sada may look like a sweet person, but he is actually an ultra black-hearted sadist. Sada takes advantage of Erika's weakness and treats her like his dog. That's fucked up. I'm not gonna watch it. Neither should you. That's... Like, that's fucked up. Like, if you're really, if you're a really lonely girl, and you really, like, 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 if you're really lonely, you don't have a boyfriend, and you're really fucking horny, maybe this is the show for you to, like, get off to, masturbatory-wise, but otherwise, like, this is, like, I can just tell based on the synopsis that's fucking offensive as fuck, and I'm not gonna watch it, because go fuck yourself. Uh, speedrun, going on. 
So are no method. The story begins one winter day when the wish of a few girls uh, was realized with a miracle changing the landscape of a town. In the skies above the town, a disc is always there. That is the most fucking minimalistic synopsis I've ever heard. It didn't explain shit. Uh, I kind of like the art style. There's, I mean, they're, they're like lolies. This is a show for serious, um, serious loli lovers. Um, uh, that should be a club name, serious loli lovers. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'll watch it. I like that it's an original work, so maybe it'll turn out to be very good, or it could be No Known Biori and be a complete fucking snore fest. I have no fucking clue. Um, I, I have no idea, but I kind of want to see how it turns out because, um, God, my nose itches. Um, I, I, I don't know. It, it's an original work, and it's so minimalistic. Maybe it, maybe it gets super fucking dark. Maybe I'll die. I don't fucking know. <laughs> that wouldn't make it any better necessarily, but it would be interesting at least. Um, I'll, and Studio 3 HZ, I, or 3 Hertz, I'm gonna call them 3 Hertz. Studio 3 Hertz, I don't know anything they've done. I don't even know if they've done anything before this. They aren't a very, if they have, that they've done very small works because I don't recognize the name at all. Um, maybe they did kid shows before or something, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it just because I'm interested because it's an original work with a very minimalistic synopsis Which leads me to believe it could be very fascinating. I don't know. Maybe it's stupid uh, Next we have speedrun gotta go. We have Gikuro Kokuri-san a uh, Gikure, I don't fucking know Ko 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 Kohine Ko Kohina Ichimatsu is a little girl who ends up summoning been, ends up summoning by a Kokuri-san a lower-ranking ghost in Japanese folklore. The Kokuri-san she calls ends up being a white-tailed, ha haired, haired, ha being a white-haired, handsome young man. Although he had intended to merely haunt her at first, he becomes worried about her terrible eating habit of cup ramen, by cup ramen for every meal. So he decides to haunt her in order to protect her. To complicate matters, Kohina's doting dog spirit Inugami and no good Tanuki Shigaraki join them. This is probably a comedy. Maybe it was based on a four coma. It's based on a manga. I don't know if it's a four coma or not. Uh, it's probably a comedy, you know, basically the girl doesn't know how to eat properly, the ghost haunts her and tries to get her to do things. It could be funny, I don't know. I'm probably not gonna watch it, I'll listen, I'll have an ear out to see if it's funny or not. If it's not, I'm not gonna pick it up. It's, like I said, based on the general art style, it seems like it's based on a four coma. Uh, four comas tend to not be very good. Again, there are exceptions, I don't fucking know. Um, but, uh, I'm gonna keep an ear out and see, uh, see if it's good or not. Um, anyways. Speedrun, gotta get through these. There's so many fucking shows to get through. You think I'm going really fast right now and you're like, oh my god, man, slow down, you got time. No, we have so many fucking shows left. You have no idea. We gotta keep going.